Hello everyone. Now welcome to week two lecture video once again. Um, this is our last video this week. In the previous videos, um, we have discussed that the weakness of the repricing model is its reliance on book value rather than market value of assets and liabilities. In most countries, the financial institutions report their balance sheets by using book value accounting. Uh, this method records the historic values of securities purchased, loans made, and liabilities sold. For example, for the United States, banks, investment assets, um, for example, uh, those expected to be held to maturity are recorded at book values, while those assets expected to be used for trading purposes um, that means the trading of securities are available for sale securities. These are reported according to their market value. The recording of market value means that assets and liabilities are revalued to reflect current market conditions. Thus, if a fixed coupon bond had been purchased at $100 uh, per $100 of face value in a low interest rate environment, a rise in current market rate reduces the present value of cash flows from the bond to the investor. Such a rise also reduces the price, uh, let's say at $97, at which the bond could be sold in, sold in the secondary market today. That is, um, the book value accounting will still report it at $100. However, the market value accounting approach reflects um, the value, uh, which is $97. The market value accounting approach therefore reflects economic reality and the true value of assets and liabilities if the financial institution's portfolios were to be liquidated at today's security prices rather than the price when the assets and liabilities were originally purchased or sold. This practice of valuing securities at their market value is uh, referred to as marking to market. In the repricing model that we have learned in the previous videos, we rely on book value accounting. However, in the maturity model that we are discussing now, uh, the effects of interest rate changes on the market value of assets and liabilities are explicitly taken into account. This contrasts with the repricing model um, at which this market value effect are ignored as we learned previously. So essentially, the main difference between uh, the repricing model and the maturity model is that in the repricing model, we consider the book values of assets and liabilities to calculate the effect of interest rate changes. Uh, on the other hand, in the maturity model, we consider market values of uh, assets and liabilities um, to see the impact of interest rate changes on net interest income. The other estimation or calculation are pretty much uh, the similar. Um, to summarize, uh, if a financial institution has uh, fixed income assets and liabilities, now how an interest rate change can affect uh, the value of these assets and liabilities. Typically, a rise in interest rate will lead to a fall in the market value. If you can remember previously, we have discussed that value of any asset or present value, um, the market value of any assets and liabilities essentially reflect the present value of future cash flows to be generated by that asset and liabilities. Now, present value, how do we calculate present value? Present value is the cash flow divided by one plus discount rate. And this discount rate reflects the market rate. Now, if market rate increases, it means that the discount rate goes up. So as we are dividing cash flow by a higher rate, the present value will decline. So there is an inverse relationship between interest rates and the market value of assets and liabilities. That's why an increase in interest rate will uh, result in a fall in the market value of assets. On the other hand, a fall in interest rate will lead to an increase in market value. <coughs> Sorry. 
Um, and also, uh, the longer the maturity, uh, the greater will be the effect of interest rate changes. For example, if um, an asset has a maturity of one year and another asset has a maturity of um, the five years, then the five-year maturity will um, five-year maturity assets value will be affected more uh, compared to a one-year maturity asset for a given change in interest rate. That means for a rise and fall in interest rate. The fall in value of longer term securities increases or diminishes or increases at a diminishing rate for given increase in interest rate. That means um, if interest rate increases, then long term security uh, fair value decreases, okay, but decreases at a, um, a diminishing rate. Okay, so uh, these are the general rule for the effect of interest rate changes on market value of assets and liabilities. Now, the, these uh, market value model or the maturity model can also be uh, taken as a, a portfolio perspective. For example, for a financial institution, there will be typically a portfolio of assets and portfolio of liabilities. So according to this maturity model, in the portfolio of assets, the maturity of all the assets will be multiplied by this, their corresponding weight and by summing up the maturity of asset portfolio will be calculated. Similarly, the maturity of all liabilities will be multiplied by their corresponding weight in the maturity in the liability portfolio and by summing up the liability uh, portfolio's maturity will be calculated. Okay, so once again uh, for the asset portfolio each assets maturity will be multiplied by its weight and each liabilities maturity will also be multiplied by its weight as a result by summing the liabilities and summing the assets we will get the maturity of asset portfolio and maturity of liability portfolio and then we will get to calculate the maturity gap so this is maturity gap maturity gap is maturity of asset portfolio and maturity of liability portfolio. Now, what will be the effect of interest rate changes on the net interest income will essentially depend on this maturity gap, okay? And typically, uh, the maturity of assets are higher than the maturity of liability, and so is for most banks and thrift institution. As a result, an increase in interest rate change will typically have a positive impact on the net interest income. Now, um, if a financial institution wants to immunize against um, the interest rate risk exposure, then immunization could be achieved by perfectly matching the maturity of asset portfolio and maturity of liability portfolio. So what does that mean is, if the maturity of asset portfolio and maturity of liability portfolio can be matched perfectly and their difference is zero, which means that the effect of interest rate changes will have a zero effect on the net interest income. However, a financial institution may not like to perfectly match the maturity of asset and liability portfolio because as I previously discussed, that a perfect matching of the asset and liability maturity might uh, eliminate the interest rate risk exposure that however also can negatively affect a financial institution's profitability. Now, um, Although the maturity model is superior to the repricing model in a way that maturity model considers uh, market value of assets and liabilities where repricing model only considers book value, the maturity model, however, also has uh, two weaknesses, okay? While a strategy of matching assets and liability maturities move the financial institution in the direction of hedging itself against interest rate risk, it is easy to show that this strategy does not always eliminate all interest rate risk for a financial institution. This is because of the two weaknesses of this model. First of all, it does not account for degree of leverage in the financial institution's balance sheet. And the second is it ignores the timing of cash flows from the financial institution's assets and liabilities. First of all, to show the effect of leverage um, on the ability of financial institutions to eliminate interest rate risk using the maturity model, 
assume that in financial institutions invest 100 million dollar in one year 10 percent coupon bond and that this um, is funded through 90 million one year deposits paying 10 percent and 10 million in equity initially the maturity gap is zero maturity of asset portfolio and maturity of liability portfolio is zero so a one percent rise in interest rate changes um, this relationship and even though the maturity gap is still zero the equity value falls by 0.1 million the drop in equity value is due to the fact that not all of the assets are financed with deposits and some equity is used to finance a portion of the, the financial assets the financial institutions assets um, the second one as i indicated that uh, the effect of interest rate changes uh, can still have an impact even if the uh, maturity between assets and liability portfolio is the same uh, due to the differences in timing of the cash flows that is not considered. So despite the matching of maturities, the financial institution is still exposed to interest rate risk because the timing of cash flows on the deposits and loans are not perfectly matched. In a sense, the cash flows on the loans are received on an average earlier than on the deposits where all cash flows are occur uh, typically at the end of the year. That's why even if the assets and liability maturity may be matched, but the cash flows on the assets and cash flow on the liability since coming uh, and uh, are in going in a different point in time within the range of the maturity of the assets and liabilities, there is still interest rate effect despite the maturity gap is zero. Okay, so uh, that's all of our discussion about the maturity model. Thank you very much. Uh, in the next week, I will come back with our discussion on the duration model. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next week.